So a particle starts out at 15 feet from the origin at uh, uh, 34 degrees and goes counterclockwise in a circle until it reaches uh, 285 degrees in 22 seconds. I want us to be able to do the similar thing with this problem. Find its average speed, its average velocity, average acceleration. Okay. Uh, for this, I want us to do all right here. Average speed, average velocity, average acceleration, and instantaneous acceleration. And we're going to be able to see some stuff from here. This one is also going to act like an introduction to the topic of circular motion. Because the particle is going in a circular motion. So the particle starts here at 34 degrees, 15 feet, and goes in a uh, counterclockwise this way. until it ends up 285 degrees so here's 34 the whole thing is 285 the initial velocity is like this the final velocity is like that the displacement vector is like this from the displacement vector starts from where you began to where you ended that's the displacement vector. The distance is the total distance that you traveled. Okay? And so and then we'll put in some more stuff into it. So find the average speed. If we want to find the average speed, we need the distance divided by the time. The total distance traveled by the particle. Well, do we need to use the integral equation again? Integral arc length formula? It would work if you used it, but it's uh, not needed here. You could use simply the formula for the arc length of a, a circle, right? Which is r theta, or we can write r delta theta. That's much easier now instead of doing the integral. So the radius of the circle is going to be 15 feet. The change in angle, now what's the total angle that the car or the particle went? 285 degrees minus 34, right? Divided by the total seconds. But we got to change the degrees to radians when we're using this formula. It doesn't work in degrees. So we say 180 degrees is pi rads. So the degree, degree, degree cancels. And now the units come out to be meters per second. Or actually, in this case, it's feet, feet per second. OK? So tell me what you get there. That's the average speed. Nine, huh? Right? Two point nine eight six. So it rounds up to two point nine nine.
right? So that's the, the average speed. Okay, now average uh, the displacement. Now for the displacement, the easiest way to do that one, even though you could do this with vectors, you could uh, calculate the initial position of the uh, the right the displacement is r final i hat uh, minus uh, uh, let's see here the displacement is is uh, x final i hat plus y final j hat minus x initial i hat plus y initial j hat. So if we want to do one way to do the displacement would be to break down the initial position of the particle into its x and y component, right? So 15 cos of 34, the y component would be 15 sine of 34, the final uh, component will be 15 cosine 285, 15 sine 285, and you could do it that way. And you would get a certain displacement. The other way of doing it is by the law of cosines. For this problem, the law of cosines is going to be a little quicker. Okay? But this is what I would recommend you do. When you go home, try both the vector method and the law of cosines. See if they give you the same answers with both uh, methods. Okay? With this problem, you could use both. So the law of cosines would be, this is 15, this is 15, right? So you would get a triangle like this that looks like this. Fifteen, fifteen, and then what's this uh, angle here? This angle right here between here and here. Well, 285 and uh, subtracted from 360 is uh, what? Uh, 60 and 15, 75. 75 plus 34, right, is going to be uh, 109. So it's 109 degrees. So the law of cosines method would be to say this. The magnitude of d squared is equal to 15 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 15 times 15 times cosine of 109. which you can actually simplify because you have 15 squared, 15 squared, 15 squared. You can factor that out and you're left with, uh, you could actually factor out a 2 also. This plus this is 2. So 2 times 15 squared times parentheses 1 minus cosine of 109 and then take the square root of that. So magnitude of D is square root of 2 times 15 squared. Well, the 15 squared even comes out. So magnitude of D comes out to be 15 times radical 2 times 1 minus cosine of 109. It's a little quicker than that, but it should give you the same answer too. <clears throat> And you should check to see, it should be, uh, let's see, when we calculate the velocity, it should be less than the average speed. <clears throat> Here, this is the magnitude of the displacement. 